But in that case, I answered in that way. And I would not answer in any other way, no matter what anybody says on the internet as of the last 10 days. If that were the case, I would never... If that were the case, I, would never, I should never have said it in the first place. If people want to, me to recant and to repent. To repent? I, I, I repent daily because I say a lot of things that I shouldn't say. I mean, check with Sue, but the fact of the matter is I'm not ready to repent over this. I don't have to. And that is the unfortunate response of Pastor Alistair Begg. Alistair Begg, uh, last Sunday night, Today is February 3rd. This was the last Sunday in January. In the evening service at his church, Pastor Alistair Begg responding to the uproar on the Internet about his counsel that he gave concerning a Christian attending a gay wedding. I'm going to make the the case that Alistair Begg is compromising, unrepentant, prideful, and twisting Scripture, and that he should face church discipline. If you'd like, if you like what I do here, and you'd like to watch my videos without commercials, uh, please consider supporting me on Ko-Fi or on via PayPal. Uh, if you support any amount on Ko-Fi, you will see all my videos before they drop here on YouTube without advertising. And for those of you who do give to this YouTube channel, I very much appreciate you. Thank you so much. All right. I am going to make my case based on what he said on Sunday night. I've got a number of clips. Here's the next one. He wrote a long letter. It sat on my desk for a long time. This happens to us all as pastors all the time. And on that occasion, when I listened to her talk, my great concern was for her and for her relationship with her granddaughter. I wasn't thinking about the nature of the circumstances in that moment of time. All I was thinking about was how can I help this grandmother not to lose her granddaughter, who has already publicly turned her back on God and her back on God's design and in every other way. And so if you have no clue what's happening, if you have no clue what we're talking about, let me tell you this, okay? Alistair Begg wrote a book, and in his book, he recounted the counsel that he gave a grandmother that— is a Christian, and her granddaughter is not a Christian. Her granddaughter is a homosexual and going to get married. Granddaughter invites grandma to the wedding. Grandmother doesn't know what to do. Alistair Begg said, you know what? Surprise her. Show up and bring a gift. There was more to it than that. But ultimately, that was the counsel that he gave. He wrote it in a book, and... He not only gave it gave this advice privately, he wrote it in a book. And then he um, gave interview about the book and brought it up in an interview. So this is something that he brought to the forefront of his ministry was this this counsel that he gave. And now, although he does claims he doesn't need to repent, he's giving uh, an explanation of why he gave the counsel that he did. And you just heard him say, I wasn't thinking about anything except the relationship between the grandmother and the granddaughter. And that, dear friends, is compromise 101. How many times have we, conservative Christians, heard well, what will you ever do if your son comes out or if your grandson comes out or your grand grandchild comes out, whatever? Or uh, or you've heard other Christians say, progressive Christians say, well, I used to be a real hard line on the homosexual thing, but then, you know what? I met some and they're really nice people and I, and I want to be friends with them. And not that we can't be friends with them, but we are to love them. I'll get more, more into that. But what Alistair Begg has done, He's fallen into the emotional trap. He's fallen into the emotional trap. He's no longer thinking about Scripture. He's no longer thinking about God's design. All he's thinking about is the relationship between the grandmother and the granddaughter. And I don't know if it's a factor of, of him 
himself having grandchildren. I have grandchildren myself, but I would never give that counsel. But he's he's making an emotional argument. He's caving in. He's putting aside scripture, 100% compromise. And it's very, very damning, very unfortunate. In the course of that conversation, I said, you know, one of the ways in which to catch your granddaughter off guard is actually do the opposite of what she expects you to do. What does she expect you to do? Avoid her. Stay away from her. Don't get contaminated by the situation. I said, well, isn't that interesting? So what would happen if you actually went? Well, that gave great pause. And I said, but you should talk to your husband. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. And those were all the caveats that went around the conversation. But then I said, well, I think you should go. And why don't you give her a gift? Well, how would I ever know that that would set the cat among the pigeons? Because after all, it was a personal conversation between myself and somebody that I've never met in my entire life. And it was born out of the kind of conviction that I was personally rec reckoning with myself. I don't like this. I'm opposed to this. I do not endorse this. I have no interest in this. But this is my granddaughter. Because the emotion, and I, and I know that emotion. I have grandkids. I have we all have family members that we love and we care for them and we love them. We don't hate them. His, his counsel, the, his counsel is fine, except he says, go and attend. Like we don't, we don't hate them, but we can't um, approve of what they're doing. We can't attend a gay wedding, a, a ceremony of something that's ungodly. Gay weddings actually aren't even biblical. Oh, the only weddings that are biblical are between a, a man and a woman. So he has this emotional argument that he's making, and then he also says, um, <laughs> how was I to know that this would this would set the cat amongst the pigeons? How was I to know that this would stir up so much controversy uh, it was a personal conversation between me and somebody I never met before. Well, Alistair, in the original time when you shared the story, you said that the the grandmother was was shocked at your counsel, and you said that that this during the interview you said that this counsel would uh, cause cause people to um, step back and 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 question uh, what's happening here. Uh, so you knew it would stir all these things up and don't go back and say it was a personal, personal conversation. You put it in a book and you shared it and you gave interviews about it. So much inconsistency and, and foolish, prideful uh, explanation that doesn't do anything to, to, uh, lessen the, the damage of what he's done. In that conversation with that grandmother, I was concerned about the well-being of their relationship more than anything else, hence my counsel. And that is no foundation for counsel. That is, like I said, total compromise. Let me hit real quickly on the scripture twisting. Well, he's going to talk about Pharisees. Maybe that'll give me uh, an opportunity to do that. Don't misunderstand that in any way at all. If I was in the receiving end of another question about another situation from another person in another time, I may answer absolutely differently. Pharisees often complain loudly of sins they would be quite interested in committing themselves. Be very, very careful when you hear your pastor or your teacher, whoever it is, lambasting a certain area of life, especially in the realm of morality, time and time again you will discover that that loud protestation actually, sadly, tragically, proved to be a very thin smokescreen for what was actually going on in the hearts of these people. That, ladies and gentlemen, may be the worst thing I've ever heard Alistair Begg say. 
in the midst of other people sharing their concern for him and for his counsel and for Christians worldwide based on the poor advice that he gave, his, his response, or at least part of it, is that prideful, sinful gaslighting saying, you know what, the people who have the biggest problem with this, uh, you know what, you might just want to look into that. I mean, I mean, I'm adding to it, okay. But the idea is that he's saying, the people who have such a big problem with this sin, you know what, they probably want to do it too. They probably want to be homosexual. This is what he's saying. The people who are so condemning about this sin, they want to do it. Secretly, they want to do it. That is no way for any pastor to respond. This is one of the main reasons why I believe he needs to be challenged and 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 told that this is in, totally inappropriate response. It's prideful, it's boastful, it's sinful, and he needs to be called to repentance. And if not, he needs to be placed under church discipline, if not removed as pastor of the church. And you know what? There's people in his church that just might do that. We'll get to that point. That I am the product of British evangelical. Okay, now he's going to, now he goes on to talk about where he came from and how he's not like Christian fundamentalists. And then in, in the midst of all this, he's again putting down anybody who would disagree with him and lifting himself up based on his background. Represented by John Stott, Martin Lloyd-Jones, Eric Alexander, Sinclair Ferguson, Derek Prime. I am a product of that. I have never been a product of American fundamentalism. I come from a world in which it is possible for people to actually grasp the fact that there are nuances in things. Those of you who are lawyers understand this. Everything is not so categorically clear that if you put one foot out of this box, you got to be removed from the box forever. All right. I am so sorry because I just remembered I left out one of my favorite points to, to bring up on this topic. For, let me address the nuanced point here. You, you know who likes nuance is, uh, as, as long as I've been on the internet, people who love nuances are atheists and progressive Christians. You know, things aren't black and white. But I am here to tell you, folks, it is black and white. Christians ought not attend gay weddings. Point blank, zero. Now, to get back to what I should have said a, a couple minutes ago, I said he gave good advice, but he said go and attend. Here, here's what I meant by that. Don't go, but show love. He wants the grandmother to have a relationship with the granddaughter his counsel should have been, show her love. Don't exclude her. Send, her. send her gifts, but not for the wedding. Don't go to the wedding. Don't celebrate the wedding. Don't give gifts for the wedding, but have dinner on, have, have a 4th of July cookout. Get together for Christmas. Get together for birthdays. Give birthday gifts. Treat her like your granddaughter in all aspects, but don't attend the gay wedding but continue to love and cherish your grandchild. We don't have to condemn our grandchildren to a life of um, having no contact with us because they're in sin. We all sin, and there are different levels of sin. We don't cut off our gay relatives. We love them. We still love them. We don't affirm them in their relationship and in their sinful choices, but we love them and we include them in our lives. But we don't attend the weddings. They were scandalized by his free and easy fraternization with these people. You can't do that. You can't go there. That Talking about Jesus and Jesus' interaction with sinners. And here's where he's going to twist scripture. That's why it begins. All the, the publicans and sinners who said, we got to go meet Jesus. And the Pharisees were grumbling. Can you believe this thing? He goes to the house of publicans and sinners. He meets with sinners. The Pharisees would gather up their robes in righteous horror 
at the possibility of even coming within breathing space of a prostitute. And she comes and breaks a flask over his feet. This guy cannot be who he says he is. If he was really the Son of God, he wouldn't be doing this. Loved ones, Phariseeism is alive and well in all of our hearts. We have to guard against it. He's twisting Scripture. He's, he, he's defending his, his um, advice to go to a gay wedding by saying, Jesus had dinner and accepted sinners. Sinners came to him, and he freely met with them. Yes, he went to the sinners' homes, and he, he had uh, meals with them, and he talked with them, and he had life with them, but he also called them to repentance. And Jesus never, never went to a whorehouse to celebrate the, the sinful activities at a whorehouse. Jesus never went uh, to, to a um, tax collector's home and counted the money that they had at, uh, collected and stolen from the people. Although the tax collectors who were evil sinners, Jesus would meet with them and have fellow and not have Christian fellowship, but but have uh, times of, of meeting together and meeting with them and calling them to repentance and answering their questions. He would do all that with the tax collectors, but he wouldn't go to the tax collectors as they were they would he wouldn't go to the homes of people with tax collectors as the tax collectors were committing the sin of collecting too much money. Jesus would not go and do that. But yes, he would accept sinners who came to him. And we do we should do that as well. We don't go to the gay wedding, but if a gay couple comes to us, wants to sit down with us and have a meal with us, we can talk to them. We can answer their questions about what we believe compared to what they what they believe. We can talk to them about life in general. We can be kind to them. We can be loving to them and we can share our faith with them. <sighs> Twisting scripture. Alistair Begg on Sunday night went to the parable of the good of um, the prodigal son and he twisted the scripture so 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 amazingly. He likened the son coming home, the prodigal son coming home. He likened that person to the sinful granddaughter, the granddaughter who is not repentant, the granddaughter who's not returning to her father and his in his faith and in repentance, totally took a parable and applied it inappropriately, twisting scripture. The motivation for purity and holiness of life and circumspection and so on is absolutely unquestionable. The real challenge comes when we are confronted by issues that don't just fit our clean little categories. This is a clear-cut situation. It's black and white. It's, it's not nuanced at all. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about this. Christians ought not attend gay weddings. Now, we can disagree over whether I gave that grandmother good advice or not. Not everybody on the pastoral team thinks I gave very good advice. And as I said, uh, you know, on another occasion with a different person in a different context, the advice may be very different. Okay. <laughs> we, we ought not, we ought not, disagree with any mature Christians on this, Alistair. It should be clear that both of us agree that this is inappropriate counsel. Even your pastoral team, like here's here's their website. There's a link you want to if you want to watch all 45 minutes. I'm only playing about eight minutes of this 45 minute section. You can listen to it in full without my, without my me interrupting you in any way. And let me share this with you. Here is his pastoral team. There are 12 pastors. It is these 12 pastors that I'm calling on to really look into the seriousness of everything that Alistair Begg has done here. 
because Alistair Begg is compromised. He's unrepentant, he's prideful, and he's twisting Scripture. I'm serious about this. This this man, <laughs> this is very serious. This is how serious it is. What happens to homosexual people, in my experience, quotes, is that they are either reviled or they are affirmed. The Christian has to say, we will not treat you in either of those ways. We cannot revile you, but we cannot affirm you. By attending the wedding, you are affirming them. Weddings are a celebration of a union. And gay weddings are not a biblical union. You're going as a witness to, to affirm and encourage what's happening there. And the reason that we can't revile you is the same reason why we can't affirm you. Because of the Bible, because of God's love, because of His grace, and because of His goodness. Maybe I'll just give you a couple of comments. Uh, there are one or two good ones, and um, not, not many, though. And um, my friends and family have been saving me from, from the, the most strident of them. And here at the end of his, his uh, talk, he reads a few positive comments that he's received from others, admittingly uh, stating that there weren't a lot. And I would encourage you to read the comments. I did um, an initial video on Alistair Big last week. I'll link that also in the description of this video. It's a video that did, doesn't include what happened last Sunday night because it hadn't happened yet. So in conclusion, let me say this. Alistair Begg has been canceled from many, by many. Uh, and here's an article by the Insurgency News. 24-hour <clears throat> internet radio committed to the historical Christian faith cancels Alistair Begg. And let me read this comment right here. Given that there is no such thing as marriage of two men or a marriage of two women, so to take that away, then what is the occasion that the grandmother is being asked to go to? It is just a celebration of perversion, and it is a celebration of two people promising each other that they will never repent of the sin that they that will send them to hell. That's from Dan Phillips. And here's the update that's given in this article. Days after being dropped by American Family Radio. American Family Radio broadcast Alistair Begg on 115 channels, if, uh, if I have my my math right, or maybe it's 150 channels. Now, Alistair Begg's Truth For Life is on 1,800 radio stations. So about 10% or a little less than 10% of his audience has gone away because of his comments, because of his unwise, sinful uh, encouragement for a Christian grandmother to attend a gay wedding. Also, um, he agreed with John MacArthur to bow out of the Shepherds Conference. Another prominent Christian ministry quietly parted ways with Alistair Begg following his trash advice to a grandmother to attend an LGBTQ wedding. Uh, and then it's reported here that the RefNet, Reformation Network 24-hour Christian radio uh, uh, outreach of Ligonier Ministries, that's R.C. Sproul's ministry, they have also dropped... Um, Truth for Life, Alistair Begg's uh, radio program, which of course they should. Hey, what's John MacArthur really think about this? Last, My last video I said, hey, you know what? John MacArthur canceled Alistair Begg. You know what? That wasn't really, wasn't really um, correct because <clears throat> Alistair and John MacArthur, apparently they talked on the phone and they agreed mutually that his attendance would be a distraction and that he ought not attend. Now, I'm sorry. I 
always try to agree with John MacArthur, and I don't know the whole situation, but Alistair Begg should not be canceled because he's not only a distraction, he should be canceled for giving unwise or, or wrong advice to a grandmother and he's twisted scripture and he's gaslighting anybody who disagrees with him. The, let me go back to that. He's calling out, he's calling people who disagree with him Pharisees and people who probably struggle with homosexuality because they're calling out this. That includes people like his own pastoral team and those who run American Christian Radio and all the people who have made videos and blogs that are concerned about Alistair Begg's um, counsel. Now, what does John MacArthur really think? You know what? It's interesting. Tomorrow night, February 4th, 2024, Pastor John not only will be preaching Sunday morning, but Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, Pastor John will be doing a Q&A. And isn't that a nice coincidence? Maybe it is a coincidence, but I don't think so. I think that Pastor John hap happens to do Sunday night Q&As when there are cultural things going on that are kind of hot topics. And believe me, John MacArthur will be asked about Christians attending gay weddings. So I'll be watching and you probably will be too. And what perhaps I'll be reporting on that in my next video as per what Pastor John has to say about that. Let me go over here. My last video was a live video and um, I might encourage you to watch it. It was an hour and a half long, almost an hour and a half long. My uh, former co-host Len Pettis joined me. And uh, we talked about everything that I just shared with you um, and much more. We had a lot of back and forth discussion about it. Compromising, unrepentant, prideful, scripture twisting, Alistair Begg should face church discipline. His response to the outcry of many godly men and women has only made it worse, has only made it worse. And I know a lot of you just love Alistair Begg. I love Alistair Begg too. But this is the beginning of a lot more compromise. This is the start. This emotional argument that, oh, I don't want to lose that relationship. That's the beginning of compromise. It's not the end. It's the beginning. One more thing. Alistair Begg said on Sunday night that some of his critics have stated that he told Christians that they should attend LGBTQ weddings. And he didn't do that. He didn't do that. He told one grandmother in a specific situation that she should go to a gay wedding and bring a gift. And he claims he did not tell Christians, you should go attend LGBTQ weddings. Well, he even said that one of his critics put that on the internet. And I'm one of the people who did that. I don't know if he's referring to my video or not, but I am one of the people who said Alistair Begg encourages Christians to attend LGBTQ weddings. And here's why I said it, <laughs> because he did. When you're a minister and you have, you have a platform, a large platform, and you're giving advice to callers or to people who write into you, and then you write that in a book to your audience who you know may be facing the same situation. And those people who are going to read it and your book and those people who are going to listen to your interview as you counsel a Christian grandmother to attend an LGBTQ wedding, what do you think would be their takeaway from your counsel. They are your audience. Your audience are Christians. You're giving counsel to a Christian that it's okay to attend a gay wedding. Ladies and gentlemen, and Alistair, you are encouraging Christians to attend LGBTQ weddings because what about the relationship? 
We want to show love. We want to be graceful and all those other arguments that you twisted from Scripture. Those were all the reasons you shared that content. It wasn't just a private conversation between you and someone else. You publicized it because you wanted other Christians to know that, you know what? It's okay to go to an LGBTQ wedding and bring a gift because you want them to show grace and love. And I'm here along with all your other critics saying, you can show love, you can show grace, but, but, but you don't have to go to the wedding. It would actually be sinful for you to go to the wedding. And you can maintain your relationships with your grandchildren or your other loved ones who are involved in these sinful unions. You can love them. You can be kind to them. But you can't go to those weddings. If you appreciate what I'm doing here, please consider supporting me. Link to do so in the description of this video. Also, if you, if you do that, you can see all my videos before they drop here on YouTube. You can also leave a comment below and, and if you appreciate what I'm doing here, no, <laughs> I already said that. If you'd like to contact me privately, you can email me at btwnnews at gmail.com, btwnnews at gmail.com. Until next video, hey, share this video with others because not a lot of people are saying what I've, what I've said here. Um, I think I really dissected what Alistair Begg said last Sunday night, and I've made some pretty valid points that Alistair Begg is in serious sin, compromising, unrepentant, prideful, twisting scripture, and should, should face not only being canceled from all these radio stations, but church discipline as well.